Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Well, folks, you'll have to hurry if you want to get one of these handsome pocket-sized flashlights from Lum and Abner. So send in your request right away if you haven't already done so. This fountain pen size aluminum flashlight is a really useful article. Something that would come in handy every day of the year. Now this same flashlight would cost you 75 cents if you bought it at a store. But here's how to get one with the compliments of Lum and Abner. Send in the wrapper from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder. It may be from any size package and from either the natural or chocolate flavor. But it must be from Horlicks malted milk powder. Wrappers from Horlicks tablets are not eligible. Well, write your name and address on the back of this wrapper and send it, enclosing 10 cents to cover the cost of packing and mailing your flashlight, to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. Now send in your wrapper and dime tonight. Don't put it off until it's too late. This is a fine opportunity to get a powerful, useful little fountain, fountain pen-sized flashlight complete with bulb and battery. It's a fine opportunity, too, for all you loyal Lum and Abner fans to express your appreciation of the old fellows and of their sponsor, the makers of Horlicks. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, last week, Lum and Abner planned that Lum should slip into Abner's house and get the check the insurance company paid Abner for the claim on his recent accident. As the accident was a fake, the old fellows had to get that check back to keep Abner's wife from cashing it. Well, the plan evidently didn't work out very well. For as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at the office, apparently in more trouble than ever. Listen. Well, Elizabeth Spishin, you're the one that done it all right, Lum. Tried her best to get me to arrest you first. You never told her it was me, did you? No, but them tracks that you made out there in the backyard was a dead giveaway. Everybody in the community knows you're the only one around here that's got a foot on them that big. Well, she can't prove nothing on me from them footprints. That's the reason I'm wearing these little bitty shoes today. So if she comes down here wanting to measure my feet, she can see why I ain't the one. Yeah. Or she'll think I wasn't anyway. Yeah, but, Lom, she can tell them shoes don't fit you neither. Looks like your foot is doubled up in there. <laughs> Where'd you get them shoes at anyway? I bought them down at Dick Huddleston's store. Well, the man take a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Dick tried his best to get me to buy a bigger pair. He said, these are just ruined my feet. Yeah, he will. never knowed what I wanted from him. Well, you are going to ruin your feet, too, Ron. I noticed you a while ago hobbling around here like your feet were just killing you. Mm, they are, too. But I'm going to have to stand it till this thing sort of blows over. Yeah, well, eh. Ain't no use to wear them while we're just sitting around the office here, Ron. Why don't you take them off and rest your foot for a while? Fear do. Fear I never would get them back on. Granny, my feet are swollen up there to where I couldn't even get my old shoes on now. <laughs> Well, the whole thing would have worked out all right, Mom, if you hadn't made so much noise. It sounded like you were tearing the whole house down. I never heard so much noise in my life. That's how come Elizabeth to go back in the kitchen to see what was causing all the lucre. Yeah, why didn't you come back there? You were the man of the house. You'd have come back there like you're supposed to when you heard all that noise. You could have told her it was a cat making that noise or something. Yeah, well, I would have, but I weren't for sure that it was you, Mom. I figured it was, but... It just about my luck for it to have been a sure enough robber, so I just thought I'd let the woman go back there and tend to it. I never stopped to think that I'd be robbing your house if I slipped in there and got that check for you. No, I never thought about that part of it, neither. That's all I've heard ever since. Folks asked me if I know Peabody's house was robbed the other night. Well, it's your own fault, Mom. You couldn't have made no more noise if you took a stick of stove wood and beat on a cook stove back there. Well, the trouble was I had to stand up on a chair to reach that sugar bowl. She had it clean up on the top shelf of the cupboard. Yeah, well, that's where she always keeps it. Out of I run my hand down the sugar bowl to get the check out of it and got my hand stuck in it and couldn't get it out. Well, <laughs> that's how come it to fall. Got to pulling on that sugar bowl, trying to get it off my hand and tip the chair over, and when I hit the floor, I must have busted the sugar bowl. Yeah, that, that money that Elizabeth had in there was just scattered all over the kitchen. Yeah, I forgot about you telling me Elizabeth had the Missionary Society money in there, too. Yeah, well, she's a treasure, you know. That money was for the heathens, all them nickels and dimes. And well, I hung on to the check all right. Jumped up and run just fast as I could and <laughs> got out of there. Well, I heard Lee barking at you. I knowed you must have been running. <laughs> yeah, why didn't you tie that dog up? You know what I was coming over there. Well, oh, me, I figured old Lee knowed you so well, Lum, and he wouldn't bother you now. Oh, he was all right when I went in. I stopped and pegged him a little, but I reckon when I come out of there, I went by him so fast he never knows who it was. 
I know he sure put me over that barbed wire fence in a hurry. Tore a whole piece out of my pants. He did. Yeah, looky there. For the land's sake. That ain't a very good job of patching, but it's the best I could do. Yeah, well, I reckon that the cloth there'd be hard to match up if you got there, yeah. Yeah. Well, you just ought to be glad of one thing, Lom. That's that Elizabeth never catched you. Lord me, she grabbed a shotgun as she went back there, and she'd have sure plugged you. She'd have sold you. Yeah, has she come down any today? Well, yes, but she says she's going to find out who done it if it takes her the rest of her life. Well, I aim to take the check back to the insurance company the next day, but long me, the such a to-do about it, I'm feared to move. Yeah, and oh, no, it wouldn't do to take it in there now. I don't wish I could get shut of it. I'm feared to have it on me. Yeah, well, you don't want to take it in there long for the insurance company just about tell Elizabeth who brought it in there and... And she'd know that you was the one that broke into her house. I never broke into your house, Abner. You left the back door open and I just walked in. I know, Lon, but she thinks somebody did anyway. Yeah. This is a fine how to do Me trying to help you out of some trouble and I get myself into it. Yeah. Now, very odd. He's a justice of the peace and a president of the school board slipping around here feared they'll get him for robbing a house. Yeah, Lon, we better stop talking about that kind of stuff. They caught us. Yeah, for goodness sake, don't let it slip around oh, him. He's got his arm full of mail there. Yeah. <laughs> Reckon it's more folks riding in for them flashlights. Yeah. <laughs> them things are going like hotcakes, ain't they? Yeah, I told you they would. Yeah. I know it. They keep sending in from this way. It won't take us long to restock the store here. No, it won't. I was counting up Saturday. We've got enough now to put in a stock of flour and feed. Well, I'm, I, I believe we ought to just start buying stuff. We can open up a store here whether we've got a complete stock or not. When we send out enough flashlights to buy a case of pork and beans, well, I just call up the wholesale house and tell them to send them out. Well, what's the rush about? Well, if I'm going to be the president, I want to hurry up and get started. Well, we don't know yet who's going to be president until all the votes is counted. Yeah, but all I can tell already, Lum, I'm going to be elected. Yes, sir. I can tell that the way they're coming in here. That one vote that you sent in for yourself is the only one you've got so far. Yeah, well, I think my friends is... Just been sort of holding back till the last. Yeah. <laughs> Let you get a big lead and then snow you under. Well, howdy, Dick. Yeah, hello, Dick. Come in, yeah, come in. Here for you, fella. Well, fine, fine. Just lay it there on the counter, Dick. Well, Granny, that's the biggest batch we've got yet, ain't it? Yeah, but this ain't half of it. I'll send Cedric over with the balance of it after a while. Well, for good, I say. Well, those flashlights are going a lot better than I thought they would. Well, I ain't surprised over it. I know they would. Well, I knew they would too, Lum, if everybody could see them, but I... <laughs> I knew it was going to be hard for you fellas to explain to them just what a nice gift it was. Well, we explained it the best way we could, and then we asked everybody to write in when they get theirs to show it to their friends and show yeah. it around town, you know. I know what everybody sees that's going to want one of them. Well, they must have been showing them around, too, for we're getting more mail every day. Yeah. Let me look at some of these letters, see how these votes is coming in. <laughs> Out of all them letters that we got Saturday, Dick, Lum never got a single vote, not one. <laughs> I know if we left it up to the folks out on the party line, I'd get to be the president. <laughs> well, this thing ain't over yet now. Don't forget that. Uh, by the way, Abner, have you found out any more about who broke into your house the other night? Well, no. I ain't found out any more about it, no. I understand that whoever it was tried to steal the money that the Missionary Society is saving up for the heathens over there. Well, now, I don't think it's anything to that. Well, they think so anyway. They had a meeting. My wife was telling me about it, and they decided if the constable here couldn't find out who was doing this robbing, that they was going to take it on themselves to do it. Well, all me, both of my arms are broke. Yeah, I know that's bad, Abner, but that's what they decided. Anyway. Well, I don't think whoever done it aimed to steal the Missionary Society's money, though. No, I don't either. Well, I don't know anything about that, but I feel sorry for whoever it was. Those women catch him anyway. Yeah, well, I don't believe they'll find him around here. I'm more likely just some tramp that's passing through town, don't it? No, no, I don't think so, Abner. Blame another letter it's for bound him. to been somebody that knows your family awfully well, or they wouldn't have known that your wife kept that money up there in the sugar bowl. Well, it might have been. You know, there's been three or four robbers around here lately. And I think whoever robbed your house the other night is the same one that's been doing this other thing. Oh, too. I don't think so, Dick. I don't think he had nothing to do with them other robberies. Well, that's what everybody thinks anyway, Lum. I've been hearing a lot of talk down there at the store. Most of them think that you can catch a fellow that robbed Abner's house while we'll have the one that's been doing this other robbery. Well, I wish folks would keep their nose out of it. I'm the constable here, and I'll find out who done it. They just give me time. Yeah, just leave it up to Abner. Well, the thing that makes me mad about it, it's bound to be some prominent citizen here in the community. Somebody that's posing as their friend, or they wouldn't know so much about these different houses. Every house that's been robbed while they've taken stuff that nobody but a close friend of the family would know where it was at. Well, I don't think they ought to be too hard on them if they find them, Dick. Might be a mighty fine fellow. No, yet. sir, no, sir, Lum. I haven't any patience for anybody that'll steal especially somebody stealing from their friends. And if they ever catch him and I can help prosecute him, I'm going to see that he gets all that's coming to him. 
I don't care how good a friend of mine he is, neither. We've got to make an example out of him. Now, I bound you we'll all be surprised when we find out who done it, if we do. That's what I say. It's somebody that we all trust, bound to be. I hope they catch him, expose him, too. They ought to run him out of town. That's what they ought to do. There ain't well, nothing to him. I don't think whoever done it aimed to do it. It's sort uh, of an accident. That was our rang, Ron. You'll have to answer it on account of my arm being broke. Yeah, all right. It's hard to look at them letters anyway. Granny said, just found one boat in there for me. <laughs> out of all the letters I've read, that's two votes for me. <laughs> Hello? Them two must have been mad at Eddard's you. Eddard's talking. <laughs> Who? Oh, just a minute, Elizabeth. I'll hold him up to the phone. I mean, uh, here, Abner, I'll hold the receiver for you. It's your woman. Oh, well. Hello? Why, yeah, I reckon so. What's the matter? Huh? Well, all right, Elizabeth. Yeah, I'll be over there in just a minute. Oh, my goodness. Lord. What's the matter, Abner? What Why, Elizabeth you? says she's found a clue over there that we can find out for sure now who it was that broke into her house. And she wants me to come right over there and she wants to do it. <laughs> Well, with this feeling existing in Pine Ridge, it's going to be just too bad if they find out that it was Lum who broke into Abner's house. Here's one thing about that flashlight that Lum and Abner are sending out that I may not have told you. The battery, while it is powerful and will give long service, can be replaced at one of your local stores when it does wear out. So you see, this handsome little fountain pen flashlight will last you for years. Now, if you'll hurry, you can get one of these flashlights with the compliments of Lum and Abner. So tonight, before you forget it, send in the wrapper from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder. It may be from any size package of either the natural or chocolate flavor, but it must be a wrapper from Horlicks malted milk powder. Wrappers from Horlicks tablets, I mean, are not eligible. Well, write your name and address on the back of the wrapper and enclose ten cents to cover the cost of packing and mailing your flashlight. Then mail your wrapper and dime to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. In return, Lum and Abner will send you this handsome aluminum pocket-sized flashlight, complete with bulb and battery. Now send in for your flashlight right away, folks. Horlick's malted milk powder, either natural or chocolate flavor, may be purchased at your druggist if you don't already have a package in the house. This is Carlton Bricker speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.